All right then, guys. Hello, welcome back. And uh, I've got my mate today, Rick Sack. Yeah, good uh, accompaniment in the car. It's a bit quiet, but at least he's there. And uh, from a distance, if I put another bag on him, it looks like a head, doesn't it? And I had to do that while I was traveling through the Ukraine. It took me like three days to drive through there with uh, an LDV van and I had uh, I had a blow up doll believe it or not in the passenger seat dressed up yeah I know you think that's a bit weird my workmates actually laughed about that but it's quite dangerous in that country to be on your own you don't want to be out on the roads at night you don't park up you park in after stay anchors which are uh, guarded and they're fenced as well yeah it's yeah it's a rough country um but anyway that's not what I want to talk about I want to talk about some something um which i call gold panning yeah other people call it cherry picking call it what you like but basically what i do is i look through videos and i do consume a lot of media um especially while i'm at home cooking stuff like that and i'm listening more than i am watching and what i'll do is i'll sift through stuff like gold panners do and find those little nuggets of gold those words or those little concepts and then investigate those yeah so Adept 2030, this was a good one. Oh, he's a bit off the wall for me um, with this grand solar minimum because he talks about electrical charges and the, the all that's what's going on with the sun and all that sort of thing, which is beyond my comprehension and I, I don't have time to research it. But they were talking about uh, the ice packs were actually getting thicker in the Arctic, yeah? And the Russians are uh, commissioning, or they have commissioned four new icebreakers nuclear powered yeah and they were discussing about it and i thought yeah it was quite interesting but they mentioned um a guy called shackleton which i thought oh, hang on i've heard of that before um so i put it in the old bag of the head there's a little nugget there maybe yeah and now strangely enough the next day i went to work and i'm listening well, not listening to the radio but it's in the background and there was an announcement it had it had been the hottest uh year that had ever been in the arctic yeah, that was the headline, right? And then they said, yeah, but that was last year. That's last year's figures. And I thought, right, OK, that's last year's figures. Why are they telling that us now, OK? Um, I thought, yeah, well, that's more of the uh, global warming agenda, isn't it, as usual? But people only ever listen to the headlines, don't they? Because the rest of the, the time they're either working and not really concentrating. But headlines always stand out, don't they? And that was a bit of a cognitive dissonance. It's like, yeah, well, I'm hearing one thing from one side, hearing something from another side. OK, just accept it, log that. But I went to look at uh, information about Shackleton. Shackleton, yeah, Shackleton and the Endurance, if you know anything about the story. In the 19, uh, 1915, 1916, he went on expedition. His ship got stuck in the ice, it got crushed in the ice, and their party had to find their way back to safety, which took them a long time. They don't have the same facilities then as what we do now with radios and helicopters and uh, planes and rescue. Yeah, they were on their own. And I got an audio book, actually, from uh, Audible. Okay, Endurance about Shackleton's adventure and to be honest with you that was a little gold mine especially for prepping six feet high bearing down upon them somebody can't, shouted to wake can't play that because it's got copyright on it but yeah that's Alfred Lansing wrote this uh, particular um copy okay and yeah, I can't really tell you about it. I don't want to uh, give you a spoiler alert. It's something, if you're into audio books or books themselves, it's worth studying just a little bit if you are into prepping for extreme situations because they went through it. Rather than getting prepared for something that might happen or will happen, they actually were prepared for an expedition to the uh, South Pole. This is Ant Antarctica. And they had a disaster, and utter catastrophe, and they had to make do with what they had and survive, yeah. So with dwindling supplies, they were eating seal meat, they were uh, running stoves on uh, blubber burners, blubber burners, yeah, so that's uh, whale fat. Um, 
They were killing animals when they could, trying to keep uh, their supplies uh, as much as possible. They ended up eating dogs and killing, killing their uh, sleigh animals. They were pulling lifeboats across the ice, which were very heavy, yeah, uh, making very slow progress until they could find open sea. And of course, of course, the ice was very treacherous. And you have guys that are falling in the water and uh, having to be kept moving all night until their clothes dried off because they had no spare clothes. Yeah, the whole thing is you can put in your imagination think, actually, okay, they had no clothes. Did they shower? They had spare socks, maybe some pants and things like that, but they were their clothes must have been standing up. Yeah, they must have been really mingy. But, yeah, with uh, near enough starvation and uh, no sleep at times and fighting against all sorts of extremes, I thought, actually, yeah, my preppers that we watch... They haven't been through anything yet. They are getting prepared for stuff. Whereas guys like Shackleton and his team, yeah, and there's more of those. <laughs> there's been a lot more failures in the in the uh, the polar um, expeditions than anything, hasn't there? Yeah, uh, they all have their stories to tell. They've been through it, which gives you an idea, an extreme idea, and it also shows you how lucky we actually are. Yeah, I mean. I don't have the heating on in the house, and I'm starting to think of ways to keep warm, to keep myself warm, keep my boy warm. And uh, <laughs> it's not minus 30, or 40, or 50, or even 60 degrees centigrade here. It's uh, 2 degrees centigrade at the, today in the UK, and it's 14 degrees in the house, which is not cold. <sighs> even though I've got uh, mist coming out of my mouth, I'm actually quite warm, yeah? Um, that's only my own personal concern. I'm actually uh, not preparing for something. I'm having to go through it. Yeah, this is going to be a very expensive time for fuel. So I've got to find alternatives. And the first thing to do is be as minimal as possible and sort of survive the best way we can. Now, the takeaway from the story that I got is that people are actually very hardy and they will adapt to their situations when they have purpose. Okay, this was the big thing, is having purpose. They had uh, hope, which is a goldmine of motivation at the end of the day. If they have somewhere to go to or a purpose to get to, they will motivate and they will push and they will push and push. And they don't give up, do they, until they've got there, yeah? So I'm <clears throat> three quarters of the way through this book and I'm absolutely riveted with this. I get three quarters of an hour to work three quarters of an hour back from work so you can imagine how quickly i'm getting through this actual novel and it's it's it is a gold mine yeah so I've, I've panned for some of this information things like pemmican for instance which city prep was talking about and i thought man that must be an american thing i'm not sure about that but now i've heard about this and i understand that it was a food for for them and for dogs it's worth now understanding that this is something that could be used, yeah, in, in uh, times of extreme crisis, yeah. So anyway, look, it's just a heads up, guys. It's worth looking at people who have gone through stuff rather than just preparing for something that is coming. Is actually look to see what people did in the times of adversity, yeah. Their stories are all either on audio or written, aren't they? Yeah, the ones that have put their stories uh, pen to paper, as it were, which... I think it's worth investigating, yeah? Always be prepared, as usual, in the way that you can. And I will say this, guys, there is fear-mongering, and there's so much of it, and it seems to be one of those deniable facts that uh, people who put videos out, they some of them are conscientious, they don't try, whereas others do purposely, whether subconsciously or not, they do try to get that type of fear porn pushed okay and i understand it because it's a motivation of urgency is that, I, that sometimes you do have to put the fear of god into people to get them move to move yes um but there are other times when people are just there for the for the the rush of it it's like watching movies they watch horror movies because they need that feel yeah and it's the same thing they'll watch continually they watch over and over again different um move, uh, films and uh, prepper stuff to get them into that mood, yeah, of anxiety, which I think sometimes is actually the worst thing to do. Yeah, if you're in your autonomic nervous system, which is relaxed, you can do a lot more and you can think clearly. When you're in a panic, you can't do it. You just can't do it. So I really wish, although I know it's a necessity, necessity that some some of the bigger preppers would, would calm down a bit, yeah? Get meditating or something, chill out, but... 
Like, no, but that's the way they get hit, isn't it? Yeah. So, anyway, I shouldn't criticise at all. I'm only here giving a, my little bit of a contribution and a little heads up on things like the books that I read or listen to. Yeah, if it's of use to you, thumbs up. If it's not, then piss off. <laughs> that's all I've got to say, yeah. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.